Today on Animal Airport, a girl is distraught when her dog is seized at passport control. 19 chameleons are dead on arrival. Will the rest of the shipment survive the night? The next 48 hours will be like quite telling for these. And a giant delivery is the talk of the ark. Wow. <laughs> With nearly half a million flights a year, Heathrow is the busiest international airport in the world. As well as 65 million human passengers, each year around 40 million animals passing through the airport check in at the Animal Reception Centre, affectionately known as the Ark. It's 7 a.m. Animal health officer Chris has a long list of cats and dogs to pick up. It's um, quite a bit busy today. I've uh, got four flights to go out to this morning. I've just picked up one, which is two cats. Oh, the plane's just coming in. It's good timing. Chris's next pickup is a dog and one cat that are flown in from the States. They can either be stored up in the front hold, which is on um, metal pallets. Or if we uh, go round, it's called hold five, which is where all the loose luggage go. Um, but they're kept separate from the bags and tied down. Domestic pets are the everyday business of the animal reception centre. Nice one. How you doing, all right? Yeah, not bad. There's three of them up there, apparently, so... Three, OK. The animals can be just as nervous as their owners or passengers flying. But I'd say 90%, most of the animals that come off a flight are fine, wagging their tails, you know, meowing, aware of what's going on. All right, mate, no worries. Next destination, back to Terminal 4. All right, so just going over the runway, just checking for any moving aircraft, which is obviously important. I know the planes are quite big, but sometimes they do sneak up on you. Uh, but you've got to have your wits about you. And there's our dog waiting on the rocket for us. Yeah, if you just give us a lift on with that, that'd be great. <coughs> so we've got room with that. It's so busy, Chris is running out of room on the van. Um, we have to do a bit of rearranging, I think. We're a little bit forward. It's like a jigsaw puzzle. You've just got to try and manoeuvre what you can so it all fits in. Um, there we go. <laughs> Inside Terminal 3, one animal arrival isn't going so smoothly. Animal Health Inspector Sharon and Animal Health Officer Ross have been called to a dog that's been stopped at passport control. We don't know where it's from, we don't know what flight it's coming on. We know, literally, we know no details at all, so till we get there, we can't, we can't decide on anything. It's immediately clear the passenger's confused about why she's been stopped. Yeah, Apparently, it's not the first time she's flown with her dog in her hand luggage. In August, when I came back, again, I had some chicken for him. And as I walked home, and I asked him, I said, excuse me, I have some chicken that I bought for him so he can get hungry. Can I just ask what flight, flight you came on first? Ross needs to get to the bottom of the story. And luckily, the passenger's being very cooperative. So this is the first time you've come back with the dog from, from the Middle East? No, no, no. I live in the UK, but yep. kids study in the UK. Okay. So in summer, I went on the 3rd of August, came back on the 28th of August, and I had my dog. So you flew through Heathrow again? Yeah. It's the only airport I can take. I can't take another airport. What, and you same thing again? You literally just came in on... on... And I asked. I said the person, I said, I have my dog. This is the party. said, no problem. I Every said, time you yeah. come in, You've actually broken the law. 
But if, then why did my friend lie to me? Exactly. It's not so much. Oh, definitely. What the airline have broken the law by actually allowing you to bring the dog in the cabin with you into the UK. He's not from the Middle East. Yeah, but because you went to the Middle East, doesn't matter where oh. the dog originated. Yeah, I see. Every time you've gone to the Middle East and come back, yeah. every one of those times, so my you broke. Vet was telling me. Definitely, one hundred percent. Well, I didn't know that. So, I mean, there's no point. Oh, obviously, I'll have to look into it. So, was it just last year you travelled in, or you've done it before? Before as well. Really? I mean, that's fine, honestly. The fact that she didn't know the law doesn't make any difference. They still need to detain the dog. But Ross tries to break the news to them gently. What we want to try and do today is resolve the situation as, quick, as quickly as possible. Now, unfortunately, that will involve us. We'll have to take the dog with us now. It's all very upsetting for the passenger's young daughter. But Ross does his best to reassure her that her dog will be fine. We'll look after him, I promise. We'll take him back, we'll give him something to eat, we'll give him something to drink. Oh, you can't, I'm afraid. You can't, I'm afraid. We'll have to take him with him now. I just want to tell you, he's very, he's very thirsty. Of course, yeah, like I said, like I explained to your daughter, we'll let him out if we can, or give him food, water, bed, so he'll be fine. I don't, I'm afraid. We finished with this lady. She had a dog. Ross needs to check the dog's okay before they take him back to the ark. Hello, mister. How are you? Are you okay? By the sounds of it, it's just potluck. She got stopped this time. So um so that's but that's a different that's a different situation altogether. We'll just try and get the situation fixed for this one and then we'll go from there. That's bad, Shazza. So look, so how let's, come back. let's get this dog out. She, she's been through three times before. Chris has arrived back at the Ark with the pets he's picked up from the early morning flight. And, as he predicted, most are none the worse for their overnight ordeals. But one dog has defecated in its crate. It happens, he's messed in his box, which isn't nice. So I'm just going to get some gloves. And that can be down to stress or just the owner's being a little bit careless and actually feeding them before the flight, which isn't pleasant. So halfway, well, halfway through the flight, they can't help it, you know. You've got to go, you've got to go, poor things. So hopefully he's going to come out on his own. Hey, Happy, you don't want to stay in there, do you? There you go. It's not no smell. And obviously, I haven't got a, a lot of space to move around, so just step in it and smudge it everywhere. All in their bed in. Yeah, on a scale of uh, one to ten, one being the most worst, I'd say it's one. It's not pleasant, doesn't smell nice. Unfortunately, it's got to be done. It's not just pets that the Ark has to deal with. Millions of animals are imported each year, many destined for the pet trade, private collectors, animal sanctuaries and zoos. Everything from monkeys to millipedes. And the Ark staff needs to know how to handle them all. Deputy Manager Tristan's been joined by Guy Clark from the UK Border Agency to make a routine check on a shipment of chameleons en route from Ghana to Japan. Trade in chameleons is strictly controlled, and immediately Tristan's concerned. Now this chameleon is quite a, a large chameleon. It's an adult, um, graceful chameleon, Chameleo gracilis. Um, you can see the eyes are quite sunken into the head. That means that it's uh, quite dehydrated. Dehydration is the most common cause of death in shipments like these. And the smaller the chameleon, the worse its chances. Um, we're going to check a few more bags anyway, and we're looking at um, the size and the age of them. Guy's concerned the chameleons in the box don't match the official paperwork. It's another specimen that's very small and very thin as well. It should be three or four times the size. Now, this is the sort of size I would expect to be correct for the uh, paperwork. So you can see quite a considerable yeah. difference there. As you can see from this larger one, it hasn't suffered from dehydration. The, the eyes are very prominent. 
The permit shows they're about uh, 13 or 14 months old. So I say we should be expecting to be much larger than this. So I would think this whole ship, or certainly all the chameleons, will be staying here. They won't be going on to Japan. The shipment is seized and photographic evidence taken in case there needs to be any legal action. Okay. But the scale of the problem soon becomes apparent. In the first few bags, they already find two of the chameleons haven't survived. But how many more will they find dead? Sharon and Ross have just made it back with a detained dog from Terminal 3. It's a Bichon frieze called Gucci, and it needs to be processed and found a kennel. Little cages, Gem. Birdwing. Like some little ones down there, yeah. yeah. Busy day today. Yeah. Even for a little dog, we run out of room. Just in case. Oh, well. Before they can decide what to do next, Ross needs to check that Gucci's been microchipped. Any all important microchip. And had all the jabs necessary to pass through immigration. Okay, thank you. Let me go. Stay there, Stay there Steve. The bird said she'd done the same thing three times before. Just rocked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at him. What's happening, my boy? The mother and daughter have come to the Ark to find out what's going to happen to their dog. And Ross and Sharon need to interview them about how many times they've travelled through Heathrow with Gucci. It's an airline's responsibility to ensure its passengers don't carry animals illegally. Every detail needs to be logged, as it will be used in evidence if the airline is prosecuted. We didn't know that uh, we weren't able to give, bring him in through Terminal 3, although we did bring him in twice before, and uh, she, she thought that they were going to take him forever, but no, thank God, it's just a you know, question of resolving the papers. And... There's good news for Gucci. All but one of his treatments is in order. Fortunately enough, the animal was um, 99 percent pets compliant, which is why he's only got to go for this short tapeworm treatment. And then um, 24 hours from the tapeworm treatment, the, um, the, the animal can be released and they can take it home from there. So, yeah, all sorted, really. Back with the seized shipment of chameleons, the decision has been made to remove them all from their crate. And Tristan has a plan. I need um, one of the rooms down the bird wing set up with um, a cage in the middle and some ropes off of it, cargo nets, things like that, because we're going to be releasing about 100 chameleons. Give a shout when you're getting there. Yeah, OK, thank you. Attendant Tara's only been working at the Ark for a few weeks. I'm quite excited because this is the first time I've been here for a seizure, so I'm a bit excited. To create a bit of Africa, Prentice Lloyd's using conifer from the car park. When I came to work this morning, I was not expecting to cut down a tree. I'm a tree surgeon, I think. Drop on tree. I'm The chameleons are so dehydrated that every second counts. But for many, it's too late and the death toll mounts. This is the worst part about the job. Our job's lovely, but this, this stuff is, is the worst. And we, do, we don't see it too often, luckily, thankfully, but yeah, it's one of the worst parts. One alive, four dead. It's the first time Tara's had to deal with animals that have died in transit. It is grim. I don't like it. I think he's dead. I'm sure he's dead. But Tara's wrong. Oh, you're like, oh. There's a survivor. I think he was asleep. <laughs> he's quite alive now. The team spirits lift as they find more and more survivors. There's a, I'm sure there's a little bit, a little bit of sank in him. We'll put him out of the light. We'll come back in 10 minutes to see if they're getting on. Hey, so he's quite, quite of a happy chappy. His eyes are quite, they're not so sunken. Right so this, this fellow would just put straight in. 
I'm not going to worry about giving him any water because that's going to create more stress for him. So. That's 26 alive, but seven dead. Many of the survivors are too weak to drink naturally and are administered water by syringe. He's just very weak. But he's wanting to move, which is a good sign. Hopefully getting him in here will help him. Well, go on, sunshine. No, it'll be all right, that one. You tell. We'll keep these. These, because um, obviously this will be ongoing, so these will get frozen. Do we have to hold on to these for, um, for legal reasons? Because should, should they go on to the shipper, then we need to verify how many, how many have died at the ark. So out of the 95 total, we had 19 dead. You can see that's, that's far from perfect, but it could have been a lot worse, so it, we know we'll just do the best we can for the ones we've got now. For the survivors, the next 48 hours will be crucial. It's 8 p.m. and as things are starting to wind down in the passenger terminals, the Ark is getting ready for a big delivery. A 140 kilo Aldabra giant tortoise called Darwin. Plane should be landed. Oh, should have landed. We've got to wait for it to taxi around now. The human passengers coming in from the Seychelles are unaware of the supersized tortoise boxed up beneath them. If it's dogs and cats, well, the cats they won't normally hear, but if a dog cries or you know barks in the hold, they can actually hear it upstairs. Back at the Ark, Darwin's new owners are nervously awaiting his arrival. Obviously with any big animal, there's still quite a few sort of things to be worried about, but hopefully as soon as he gets back to the park, it'll be settled, but until then, who knows what's going to happen. I'm sure it'll be absolutely fine. They're quite, they're quite robust animals, so... It's just waiting around. <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully, the first thing out will be the tortoise. Karen's been told Darwin was loaded at the front of the plane, but the cargo hold is looking rather empty. It's a tense few minutes as she begins to wonder whether the tortoise made its flight. Suddenly, she spots it's already been unloaded at the back of the aircraft. Change their minds. And has to make a hasty U-turn not to keep the loaders waiting. Darwin's even heavier than they expected. You've got paperwork for it. Karen will need help to manoeuvre him into the van. Fortunately, there are five strong men on hand. You want to come up? Okay. There's no way of knowing how this passenger has fared until the crate is opened. But that's a quarter of a tonne of tortoise and packaging shifted. That's it. Yeah, there's nothing anywhere. Thanks, fellas. Cheers. The nervous wait is almost over for Darwin's expectant new owners. Animal health officer Stuart is flexing his muscles. Fee, me and you then. But it's only a moment before he's calling for help. Golly! I you were big and strong. Not a lot of that, mate. I'm 40. Already, tails at the Ark are taking on a magnitude to match the size of this shipment. I've just got to have a look because apparently it took 10 men to get him off a flight, so... Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> it's huge. Yeah, I don't need to go down the gym now. Pushing 200 and something kilos. You know what I mean? We're just going to leave it here. Okay. Just leave it here, Karen. It's... Thank you. The crate's been padlocked shut and there isn't a key. At the end of a 13 and a half hour flight, it's an undignified welcome to the UK. That's it. There you go. That's what I was trying to do initially. One Aldabra tortoise. Wow. <laughs> Protected in its natural environment, the islands of the Aldabra Atoll in the Seychelles, this magnificent creature is officially categorised as vulnerable. 
Stuart's been at the Ark for 18 years, but even for him, this is a rare event. There you go, good lad. So, we don't often get them in. I've, I've seen probably three others roughly the same size that's come through Heathrow. An unusual sight at the Ark. The tortoise is attracting a lot of attention. It's amazing. Mm, definitely giant. It's the first time I've seen one through us, especially at this size. It'd be nice to see it out of the box. You might have to pop down and visit once it's settled in. While the team is eyeballing the tortoise, Lloyd is looking after the Ark's newest residents, the chameleons. They're in need of close attention. So, yeah, they're reacting quite well. The uh, water is just for the humidity in the room. They don't generally drink from water bowls, they usually lick off leaves, so it helps them uh, hydrate. But yeah, they're actually, they seem to be like settling in right now. A few of them are just lying there and not moving. But hopefully the square in and being in the room for a while, they'll start moving about. Darwin, the giant tortoise, is finally ready to meet his new owners. Oh, he's brilliant, isn't he? Big boy. Yeah. But yeah, very nice. Can you get rid? Okay. Yeah, I was going to say it's getting rid. It's nearly midnight, and there's still a 60-mile road journey ahead. Just one last big push, and he's on his way. Cheers. All right. Cheers, guys. Thank you. See you later. All right. All right. See you. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Next morning, Ross brings breakfast for the chameleons. We've got about 300 large locusts and about, about 2,000 crickets. As Ross gets ready in the bird wing, he's keen to see how the chameleons have fared overnight. At first glance, it doesn't look good. Oh, you can see a couple on the floor already. Oh, no, no. It just, it's just been a little bit slow. Well, that's a good sign. But four more chameleons haven't survived the night. Oh, OK. Though Ross can see some encouraging signs in the survivors. You can see it's got them all invigorated, gotten them to move around a bit. You can see the changes in body colour as well. So, yeah, no, it's all a good sign. Look. It's good, man, see? So, at this early stage, really important. Getting here as much as we can, keep them spraying, do you know what I mean? Getting rehydrated. Hopefully when they get rehydrated, their body condition will improve, so then they'll start eating a bit more, do you know what I mean? And then hopefully we'll keep the mortality to a minimum. Now that's good, we like that. The fate of the surviving chameleons is now a waiting game. Animal welfare is like, like our top priority, so we'll do the best we can for be it a chameleon or a little Staffordshire Bull Terrier puppy from Edinburgh, do you know what I mean? They're, although they're completely different animals, they've all, we've got the same principles for everything we do, so... We'll do the best we can. After 48 hours quarantine, Gucci the Bichon Frise was reunited with her family. I know, I know, I know, I know you missed me. <laughs> it took a little persuasion, but Darwin the giant tortoise completed his long journey. And thanks to the efforts of the Ark, 16 chameleons survived. These are off to their brand new home. Yeah. Bye bye.